Hi there, I'm Talita, a marketing automation consultant, trainer, and course creator. In this video, I'll show you how to create emails in Kit, formerly known as ConvertKit. We'll also dive into email sequences, automated series of emails sent to your subscribers. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about creating emails inside ConvertKit. So before we go there, let's just make sure that we're on the same page here. Before you send emails to your contacts inside ConvertKit, you have to have your contacts inside ConvertKit in the first place. If you haven't watched my other video on how to add subscribers to your Kit account, then please watch that video because we talk about different methods for adding contacts to your CRM, how to tag people, right? So that we can have different audiences in our CRM so that we can, you know, send them targeted messages. In that video, we also talk about capturing leads through forms and stuff like that. So it's a lot about, you know, the CRM email list itself. So if you haven't watched that video, I would ask you to watch that other video first, just because, you know, it really does make sense to learn how to create emails inside ConvertKit if you haven't, if, if you don't have subscribers inside Kit in the first place. Once again, sorry for, you know, I, I keep saying ConvertKit, Kit, ConvertKit, Kit. Well, it used to be ConvertKit until literally last week and then they changed their name. <laughs> so I'm still getting confused there. But either way, once you have have your email list sitting inside your subscribers section here, then you're ready to go ahead and create emails. Where are emails located? They are here inside this send section. Okay, so what do we have inside broadcasts? A broadcast is essentially a one off email. It's an email that you know, you send once like a newsletter, for example, it's an email that is not going to be sent frequently in an automated way, right? A broadcast is essentially a newsletter, an email, an informational email, an educational email that you're sending once, or perhaps you're sending, you know, multiple multiple times, but you're creating them every time you're sending them, right? Automated emails are different and we're going to talk about them later. But this is my email section here. This is where I can see emails that I sent in the past as well as their engagement rate. If I click inside the email, I can see the content of the email itself. This is an email I sent out some time ago. I was looking for someone to help me with video editing and um, I sent an email to my subscribers because I thought, you know, maybe someone out there can help me out. And uh, turns out I did find someone at the time. So that was great. But anyway, this is my email, right? And um, so here I have my open rate, I have my click rate as well. And I have, you know, uh, the number of people that receive that email. So um, this is my email analytics, so to say it's inside each and every email, right? Now, how do we create an email with ConvertKit? All we have to do is click on new broadcast, and then we have to select a template. Look, in terms of conversion rates, in terms of performance, what I find is that text only or, you know, simple types of emails, they tend to convert better than emails where we have a lot of images, a lot of things to look at. Of course, it depends on what you're conveying in your message, right? If you're creating a newsletter, then by definition, newsletters tend to have more elements, more visual elements there. Now, if, if you're sending an informational email, if you're asking a question, you're promoting a specific product, right? Your message doesn't really require too many images and stuff like that. Text only tends to work really well, okay? Even because some email providers, some email, email services, they might block images anyway. So you always have higher chances that your emails are going to land on people's inboxes if you're using text only types of templates. But once again, go for whatever you want here. There are other types of templates you have access to inside ConvertKit. Some of them are, you know, really, really pretty with images and buttons and lines and all that. I'm going to do something simple here. Let's just do a text only for now. Okay. So when I click on a template, I go inside the template itself and let's learn how we edit an email from a template. Okay, now let's talk about editing an email inside Kit. The first thing that happens is, well, you get redirected to the email editor itself, right? This is where you're going to add the email text um, as well as images, buttons, anything else you want. Now, really important thing. By default, an email starts with hi, first name, meaning when people receive that email from you, they will see their actual first name. Hi, Sam. Hi, Peter. Hi, Mary, and so on and so on. Really important question. What if you don't have people's first names? Meaning you have subscribers in your email list, but you only have their email addresses. The first name field is empty for them. Well, in this case, they will see an awkward empty space here. So my tip for you is the following. If you are using this personalization tokens here, hi, first name, how are things in your city, you know, stuff like that, make sure that these data points are being used in the first place. Otherwise, people will see this awkward empty spaces and it doesn't look very nice, does it? So that's my recommendation um, to you. I do have first names in, in the system. So I, I know people's first names. They are associated with their proper email addresses. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now I'm going to copy and paste some text that I prepared with ChatGPT here. It's just a, an example. It's a fictional email about a fictional product, but either way, here you go. This is um, 
some email text here. I'm talking about a new course launch and stuff like that. I have a subject line, which I'm going to copy and paste here as well. So let me just paste this here. Perfect. Great. Now I have here a hyperlink saying click here to learn more and enroll now. This can be turned into a button actually. So instead of having this as a hyperlink, I can, I can do this. Um, one thing I can do instead is I can just add a button. So I have a click on the option plus, and this is where I find placeholders for images, buttons, social media icons, and anything else I want. So everything is located here. Okay. Let me just click on the option button. So button, I'm going to copy what I have here instead. And I'm going to add this to the actual, oops, sorry, button text. Here you go. And I'm going to delete this. I'm doing this live here with you. So please forgive me if um, I get a bit unfocused when I'm talking and doing stuff at the same time. Now, obviously inside a button, I need a URL, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, just my website URL here, which is, which is fine. Um, for now, but it's not the actual product. This product doesn't exist, but either way, <laughs> this is just an example. I can make text bold by just control B, right? I can also make buttons small so I can change the corners of the buttons as well, right? I can change uh, their sizing. I can change the margin. I can change the alignment. So this is all me simply editing modules, right? All I have to do is click on the plus icon as I did just now. And then I add whatever I want. Let me add an image together with you here. I'm going to click on image and then I select an image from my library. I'm just going to add this one here just as an example. It's actually my logo, but it looks quite big. So I would need to resize this image anyway, which I can do by changing it directly here, right? But this is how you edit emails inside ConvertKit slash kit, right? All you have to do is click on add. So you're going to select the module that you want, which is essentially a placeholder. Once you add that placeholder, you're going to add content inside the placeholder. Okay. You have other options here as well. You can add lines, dividers, you can add images, you can add links for videos, you can add a gallery of images, which I guess would be really cool if you're creating a newsletter and stuff like that. But this is essentially how you edit emails inside kit. You can also change your footer here. For instance, I have my footer HubSpot expert. I can add some information saying that I do other type of stuff as well. Um, something like that. I can remove this hyperlink. I can add hyperlink to the whole thing. I'm just going to leave it as it was before, but Yes, this is, you know, as you notice here, I'm doing nothing else other than simply editing text directly in the email itself, right? You can copy paste text that you prepared beforehand, or you can simply start typing it right here as you're writing the email from here as well. Um, you have these options for turning text, bold, italic, underline, you can change alignment, you can increase the text size, change coloring, background color and stuff like that. Really, really similar to any other type of email software out there. Okay. So this is what you have in terms of editing an email inside ConvertKit. Now we're going to talk a little bit about sending that email. Okay, how do we send this email inside Kit? You know what? I was reading the email content just now, which I created with ChatGPT. I didn't even check that much. Should have. And I realized that I'm still saying convert kit. Oh, Talita, it's kit, 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 not convert kit. Isn't it so difficult when brands that you're so used to, they change their name out of a sudden? Isn't it difficult to adapt? I find so. And you know, if someone, by any chance, someone from kit is watching this video, sorry, I'll get there. I will remember the name is kit, not convert kit. Oh, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. Anyway, um, the email is ready. Let's send this email to our subscribers. How do we do that? This step is to click on continue and then you have a few options to choose from. You can send that email right away. Okay. You can schedule that email to be sent at a specific day and time, which you can choose by clicking on this pen icon here. So you select the day and time here. And you can also have the option to publish this email as a link. Essentially, what's going to happen is that you'll get a link to that email, almost like if it was a page, right? You'll get a URL representing that email, so to say. You can do both at the same time or only one. This is totally optional. Okay. Now, how do you actually send emails? You have to work with your segments. If you watched my other video on how to add subscribers to ConvertKit, I talk a lot about lead segmentation and the importance of having these tags and lists and things like that. Well, what is the importance? The importance is really the fact that we 
want to send targeted communications to people, right? We, in marketing, we don't talk to everyone the same way. Um, I have different audience groups in my customer base. I work with coaching, I work with consulting, I work with online courses. So people that bought one specific product, they might be interested in more of that specific product, right? I can also cross promote products, but the what, what matters here is the following. The message is targeted, right? You don't talk to your cold prospects the same way you talk to warm leads and it shouldn't be the case. So that's really, you know, what we do when it comes to lead segmentation. Let's come back to the topic. We're going to learn how to work with segments now so that we can prepare a list of recipients to send our email to. When you click to send an email inside Kit, by default, the option all subscribers will be selected for you. Now, depending on what exactly you're saying in your email, you might not want to send that email to all your subscribers. Remember what we were just discussing about lead segmentation, targeted messaging and stuff like that. This option can be removed here, right? You don't have to send an email to all your subscribers. Well, now, if you're talking about a company update, something that all your subscribers should know about, then feel free to go ahead with that option. Usually what we do is we add a filter so that we can send an email to a specific segment inside our audience. It can be based on filters. It can be based on actual segments, which are lists inside Kit. Um, for instance, I can send an email to everyone in my list whose first name is Mary. <laughs> you know, it's just a hypothetical scenario here. I don't, I can't really imagine a use case for this, but sure, it exists, right? Another example, everybody that was added to my list before a specific date in the calendar, right? So because I have those data points inside Kit, I have subscribe date, I have, you know, first name, email address, I have website address, I have, you know, additional fields that I can create as well, custom fields, you know, I can define a specific targeted message based on these filters here, right? Which are actually based on data points. What else do I have here? I also have, you know, I can send an email to people that are a specific distance from a city. Um, I just have to type the city name here. This is ideal if you are sending emails specific to emails related to events, perhaps local events, local networking sessions. You might be organizing something like that, right? So this is all available here. It's all based on distance, right? Because Kit knows people's location, you can, you know, use this as a filter for your email, for your list of recipients. Now, the most common type of option here is to go ahead with subscribers inside lists, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about segments, creating segments and using the segments inside your emails. You can create a segment, meaning a list of recipients for your marketing email. You can do this inside the email itself, right? How do you do this? I'm going to show you. So you click on add filter. Um, here inside all subscribers, you can click on the option subscribed to. And then here you have the option to choose people that have specific tags associated with them. This is an indirect way of creating a segment for your email, so to say. So I'm going to select the option tags here. And I want to send this email to people who are my clients and people who purchased my coaching services. Okay. So if someone purchased my coaching services, I want them to receive my email. If, if they are client, I want them to receive this email or if they, you know, perhaps they are, they have both tags. I want them to receive this email as well. So how do I do this? I simply select these tags here. So this is my list of tags inside kit, inside convert kit, right? Former client is one tag that I want to go ahead with. And the other one is bought one one coaching. So these are the two tags that I'm working with right now. Notice that apart from tags, you can also select people that, you know, filled out specific forms that you have created inside kit. We talked about forms in my other video here, which is linked in the description below. And um, you can also, you know, segment this audience by people who are part of specific sequences and so on. But tags is, is the most straightforward way of selecting your list of recipients for an email. So you can do this by following the steps that I showed you just now. So subscribe to tags and then you select your tags here. Okay. And if by any chance you want to have a list of people that you want to constantly market to them, meaning, you know, this is only one one of the emails I want to send. I want to send additional emails, I mean, to people that purchased my coaching and, and people who worked with me in the past. So the easiest thing to do here is to actually create a segment inside Kit. Let's talk a little bit about creating segments inside Kit and also working with tags. I went out of the email editing page to show you something here inside the email list, which is located here. Grow subscribers, right? This is where you find your email list inside Kit. So there are two things to work with here. You have tags and you have segments. Segments are lists. You can create lists based on tags, based on other elements. Tags are simply data points that you associate with people. So in my case here, I have tags demonstrating things that people bought. You know, they bought specific courses, they bought coaching services, they bought consulting services, they bought a consulting 
package and so on. So things that people bought in the past. I also have tags demonstrating things that people are interested in. They showed interest in a one-on-one project or something like that, right? A consulting project or something like that. So I have all these tags here. How do you create a tag? I'm going to create a tag called um, kit expert course uh, purchase, right? So I have this tag here to associate with people that purchase my fictional course called kit expert or something like that, right? So yeah. It's a fictional course, but you know what? Maybe I should create a course called Kid Expert now that I think about it. So anyway, my tag is here. My tag is created. So the, when the tag itself is created, it's empty because I still have to associate subscribers with that tag, right? How do I do this? Let me go back to my list of subscribers. Let me just choose someone here. This Sam person here is a great example because Sam doesn't actually exist. So all I have to do is add the tag that I've created, which is called blah, blah, blah purchase, right? So this one here. So now the tag kit expert course purchase is associated with Sam. So this is me creating tags and adding tags to people. Now, what is a segment and how do I use segments? Let me go back to my subscribers list once again. A segment is a list. So when I click on create a segment, well, first of all, let me just give it a name. Let me just um, go convert um, kit, right? Not convert kit. So kit uh, leads, I don't know, something like that, right? Now, the list is created, but the list is empty. Who do I want to add to this list? Well, I can add to this list people who have the tag da -da -da -da, purchase kit, kit expert course purchase, right? So basically what I'm doing here is I am, um, oops, I don't think I, sorry, I had not saved. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a list which is empty by default and then I'm adding people to this list. How do I add people to this list? In my case, by using a tag. I can also add people to a list based on forms that they have filled out in the past. Let me just show you an example. Someone that has filled out my blah, blah, blah landing page form can be added to this list as well. Why do I keep doing this? I have to click on add filter. So lists are, by default, they're empty when you create them. You have to add criteria to your list, so to say. This criteria can be based on tags, it can be based on forms and other types of elements as you saw just now, okay? So let me just delete this because it doesn't make too much sense. Let me click on save. So now I'm creating a segment and inside segment, guess who I have there? Sam, because I associated the tag expert purchase course with Sam, right? So this is how you work with subscribers inside tags. This is how you work with subscribers inside specific segments. And then once you have a segment, which, you know, is, is a list, is a list that will be there, right? For you, you can use this list however you want. You can add it to emails, you can add to your automation. So once you have that, you can then go back to your email and use this segment inside an email as well. I go back to my email. Now I can go ahead with the option within segment. I can select, select that segment that I've created, which was called kit leads, right? If I'm not wrong. Oh my goodness, why do I keep doing this? I have a thing. When you add the tag here, you have to click on add filter, okay? This is a reminder for you and a reminder for me because I keep doing this over and over again. I don't really know why. Anyway, when I am, you know, ready to go, the first thing that happens is that Kit will tell me how many people I have inside that segment. In this case here, I only have one person, which is Sam, right? I've just created that segment together with you. I'm gonna click on continue and then Kit is gonna say, okay, time to review everything you've done. This is the email you're sending. This is the subject line. Are you ready to send? Yes or no? If you are, then just click on send broadcast. Otherwise, you can go back to add it further and then send it later. So this is how you create and send an email inside kit. And this is how you work with tags and segments for your emails as well. Now let's talk a little bit about email sequences. Okay, let's talk a little bit about email sequences. It's another feature that we have here inside the send section. So send sequences. What is an email sequence? Kit explains already what email sequences are. Create multiple emails that are sent in order. So an email sequence is a sequence of emails, right? That are sent on autopilot, so to say. They are sent the automated way. So I create a sequence. I add email one, email two, email three, email four, and you know, as many emails as I want. I add delays between these emails and then Kit sends these emails on my behalf. Right, so the idea is that I create the sequences and then I use the sequences inside automation. Now, how does you know what does an email sequence look like inside Kit? This is what it looks like. So this is email one. These emails that you're seeing here are the other emails in my sequence. So this is a sequence for people that requested a free resource on my website, but they didn't really buy anything. Okay, so the email one talks about the fact that hey, thanks for requesting information about blah 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 X Y Z. Uh, here is the you know landing page for purchase if you're interested, and then. 
if they don't engage with that email, you know, three days later, I send them another email where I'm sort of teasing them to buy that resource. And then four days later, I send them another email where I am, you know, telling them, hey, here's some educational content on the topic in case you're interested. So I have a mix of educational content slash promotional content in this specific sequence here. And so in my sequence, I have five emails total, right? I can click on this. I can click on the emails here to see what is the content inside these emails. But essentially, this is what a sequence looks like, right? I have my emails and I have delays in between emails. Now, why do we use sequences? Um, you're probably wondering. We use sequences because at the end of the day, we want to keep touch basing with customers, right? There are uh, marketing statistics that show that people rarely buy something that ver at the very first time when, you know, they find out that you exist or, you know, at your first follow up email, something like that, right? People need a few follow ups before they become in customers. We're talking about majority of your customers, right? Let me just add this statistic for you here. So as you saw from this statistic, you know, you need to keep touch basing with customers so that they buy, right? Very rarely people buy something right away. So the idea with email sequence is that we are nurturing our contacts with educational, with high quality content until they buy, basically. This is the idea behind email sequences. So how do you create an email sequence? You're going to click on send sequences. You're going to click to create an email sequence as I did just now. And then you're going to select the template for your emails. In terms of creating the sequence itself, it's the exact same thing as creating emails. Okay. So I'm I'm not going to spend too much time talking about email creation because we already discussed that, right? So let me just add some text here, text, 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 right? This is me creating email one. I'm obviously going to add an, a proper, you know, subject line email one, not a not a subject line called email one. You get the idea here, right? Pretend that this is a real email. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a second email. And then in the second email, I am going to define how many days I'm waiting after the last email. Meaning in this case here, email one, how many days I want to wait before email two gets sent? Let's say five as an example. So here you go, five days later, then the second email gets sent, right? So this is email two email too. And you know, some text, 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 exact same thing, exact same thing as if I was creating a regular email inside kit, I'm adding text, I'm adding my buttons, I'm adding my images, that's the exact same logic here. Okay, so um, once I am ready with my with my sequence, once I'm ready with the content inside my sequence, once I define my delays, I'm ready to start using the sequence. This is what we're going to talk about in the next section. Before we go there, one thing that people always ask me is how many days should I have between emails inside sequences? Usually what I say is there is not a specific rule of thumb, right? It has to be five, it has to be three, it has to be seven. We don't have such a thing. What we do have is studies indicating that, you know, you don't want to overwhelm your contact. So perhaps if you are already sending someone an email, one or two emails per week, you want to space out your email so that people don't receive more than that, right? Typically when customers receive more than two emails in that same week, they might feel a little bit frustrated with the experience. But once again, it really depends on what you do as a business. It really depends on what you're talking about in your email. Emails, it really depends on your audience. I feel that some of my customers are happy to hear from me literally every day and other customers want to have some space between one email and other. It really, really depends on who your audience is. Um, so it's a matter of trying. So create your sequence, add your delays. As you start getting feedback about the frequency of your emails, the quality of e your emails as well, then you can change this. It's really easy to change this. All you have to do is click here and then change the time period here. People give you feedback. This is what's cool about email sequences. I have email sequences that I've been using for more than a year and people are constantly giving me feedback on the frequency of the emails, the quality of the emails that I send. Um, people comment on things that they learned because of my sequences because I'm always sharing, you know, educational resources and stuff like that. Anyway, this was a lot of talking. Let's uh, learn how we use email sequences. Okay, the next step after you have your emails created is to publish them. Obviously here, please, you know, this is just an example. I should have prepared some content beforehand, but you get the idea here. You're adding your actual email content here, right? And then you're giving your emails proper names and, you know, making sure that the email is really ready to go. The next step is to actually publish this email. So you have to switch on this toggle here, as I did for both emails. And once you're done, your sequence is ready. Your sequence is ready to be used. Now, how do you actually use your sequences? Now we're going to head towards 
says automate. A visual automations is the option that we're looking for now. A visual automation inside Kit is essentially a way of organizing automated actions that the system does on your behalf. Okay, so now we're talking about marketing automation here. Marketing automation is essentially to use software to automate marketing tasks. In the context of email sequences, we create automation to tell the system, hey, Kit, every time someone gets tagged with this tag here, or every time someone enters this specific segment, add them to my email sequence. Okay, and this happens in an automated way. You do a manual setup, you create the automation manually, but once it's published, then things happen automatically. You don't, it, it doesn't really require manual sort of tweaks here and there, right? When it's really ready to go up and running, then no longer manual, essentially. These are some examples of visual automations that I have here. So for instance, this one here, right? This is a great example. I have a, an order bump option in one of my products online, right? So when people have that tag, hey, they bought the order bump, five minutes later, I enroll them into a sequence specific to the order, right? Where I talk about other things that can buy, other educational resources and things like that. So I use sequences inside automations when it comes to Kit. Okay, this video here is probably turned out to be super long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the next video that you can watch in order to learn how to create automations and how to actually use email sequences inside Kit. Okay, really just trying to avoid that you're here for a really long time, feeling thirsty, hungry, or you know, you want to go to the bathroom or something and I'm here talking, talking, talking like a parent. Yeah, need to, to take a break. So let's stop here with this video and uh, I'm going to add here right after the end of this video here that you're watching, you're going to see a message on the screen saying, watch this video next. This is the other video that you're going to access to understand really how to work with automations and how to use email sequences inside automations when it comes to kids.